Hi, uh, in this video I will briefly describe the structure of cardiac myocytes. So if we were to take a cross-section through the heart, what we would find is the majority of cells present in the heart are cardiac myocytes, which are these brick-like structures, which have a single nucleus, and they're separated by intercalated discs or gap junctions through which they communicate. What we would find in between, filling the spaces, are fibroblasts, uh, which we will not dwell on too much in this video. So if we then look at a single isolated cardiac myocyte, we end up with a rather beautiful looking structure. It's surrounded by a membrane which we call sarcolemma, but what is immediately apparent are these striations that run at regular intervals through the cardiac myocyte. These are due to arrangement of myofilaments, which with thin filaments made up of actins being anchored down the Z-lines and thick filaments made up of myosin which are surrounding it. So obviously when the heart contracts these filaments slide across each other squeezing the cells and when the heart relaxes they slide back into place allowing the, the heart to relax. If we look at the membranes or the membranous structures uh, this is a immunofluorescent image of a cardiac myocyte whose membranes have been stained with a fluorescent dye. And again, you can see the membranes are running at regular intervals throughout the cardiac myocyte. And we call these invaginations and membranes transverse tubules or T-tubules. And they're really important in cardiac myocytes because they allow every single part of the cardiac myocyte to be exposed to the extracellular environment. And as we will cover in, in a video on action potential, this is particularly important, as well as contraction, this is particularly important as it allows every single part of the cardiac myocyte to contract at exactly the same time.